Right. Buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, so today I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm on my second cup of coffee. I got one comment here from Roderick uh, where he says, I, me, and we have my own featured rebuttal video. Wow, thank you, Jimmy. We are Borg. Resistance is futile. Alright, that's fantastic. Um, uh, I replied, thank you. I hope you address Daniel 9, which is the foundation of preterism. Right. Actually, I wonder if he made that video, that rebuttal. Eat bacon, go to hell. Alright. That's fantastic. Alright. Okay, good job there. I don't know what this stuff is. Alright, so Roderick, Roddy K. Is this the same guy? I thought it was Roderick. Or what I think it was? Yeah, Roderick 1983. Roddy K. 1993. Alright. Okay, so. Uh, well, let's take a listen. Just a quick video, get some parts off my mind real quick about this clean and unclean food. Is it okay to still eat the pork and stuff like that? Real quick, the Levitical laws, let's say they have never changed, okay? <clears throat> but however, we are not under Levitical or mosaic laws. So when okay. God... So, uh, I thought for a second there, I thought that it said three minutes ago. Ah, uh, three months ago. Okay, so, who cares? Yeah. So, uh, God has made everything clean for us to eat. So that, I think that's important to, to know. Um, Nothing to be refused except it. Uh, nothing to be refused. Uh, something, something, something. And for every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So be thankful for everything that God provides for you. Easy sneezy. Uh, that, the, that's the case closed, right? Case closed. There really doesn't need to be any more uh, discussed on that. The eating of the eating of the bacon was, or the I should say, the eating of um, swine, the clean and the unclean in the Old Testament was to make a distinction between the people of God and those that were not of God. To create to create that sort of uh, uh, that separation, uh, the distinction between us and them. All right, but now um, everything is is good to eat. God has made uh, all things acceptable. I oh, don't know. Ah, uh, come on. What's the word I'm looking for? Maybe, maybe this is it. I think I just passed it. Alright, okay. What God has cleansed, that call not <clears throat> thou common. What God has cleansed, that call not, thou common. Oh, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. Um, but the voice answered me again from heaven, what God has cleansed, that call not, thou common. 
and this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven okay <clears throat> so I don't want to do a whole thing on this but it's very simple okay it's very simple now let's get on to something else here let's get on to something else it's a it is an interesting little study to to do but <laughs> here I'll tell you what if that wasn't enough let's see if I can find something here meats for the belly and the belly for meats but God shall destroy both it and them now the body is not for fornication but for the Lord and the Lord for the body focus on this right here think about this meats for the belly and belly for meats and God shall destroy both it and them all right so it's interesting because there's coming a time in the life hereafter where we will not need to you know kill cows for example and eat cheeseburgers all right. uh, it might sound tragic for some people but the, if you think about it okay in the life to come hereafter there is no more death no more death so well what happens if you stop eating cheeseburgers you starve to death right well you do in this world right you do in this world Consider Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the, soul, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven and prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So there's coming a time when we won't have to eat cheeseburgers to stay alive. There's coming a time when you know, if we go three days without eating a cheeseburger, we're not going to suffer hunger pains. Right? So the meat's for the belly and belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Uh, to me, it's interesting. All right? Because it's a little bit of an insight of the life to come hereafter. Okay? For me, it's interesting. Now, you know I like to keep an eye on these guys that are talking about Revelation 20. Um, it's, it's just incredible to me. It's incredible. And the, all, every single person has it wrong. Including that, I don't know who that guy is. Is it John MacArthur? There it is. John, John MacArthur. Just to give you a quick rundown here, he says, let's go, he says a revelation, John MacArthur, I really don't know who, I don't know a lot about John MacArthur, all right, he says that the beast and the false prophet of Revelation 19 are two men, that's what he says. And it's incredible that somebody could pose and pretend to be a master of Israel, to be a master of the scripture, and have no understanding 
whatsoever. Right. It's incredible. Yeah, the guy's got a suit and tie and everything. Yet he lacks utter, complete. He, he, he's utterly got it wrong, okay? He's got it wrong. It's unbelievable. How could you even expose yourself like that? If you don't know something, hey, this is the kind of mistake you don't want to make. Because first of all, we're talking about the book of Revelation. All right? So if, you, if he would have read Revelation chapter 1, When he, if he could remember that, and he gets to Revelation 19, he should have realized, hey, this is a vision shown to John of things that must shortly come to pass. This is a vision, so that in this vision, we are looking at things from a spiritual angle. The beast of Revelation is the fourth beast of Daniel that that helps I think to know that to understand that to make that connection I mean what we're learning here in Revelation is taught all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation I don't know how somebody like John MacArthur doesn't see it other than perhaps he doesn't believe it he doesn't believe what he sees and it's remarkable somebody in a suit and tie could lack understanding to the level that he does yet some dummy like me a dummy like me who failed high school failed college dropped out of college but just too doggone stupid for both I'm too doggone stupid for education but it's amazing somebody as low down as me can have a clear understanding of the simple scripture in the book of Revelation. If I can understand it, then so also can you understand it. And it, it really, all it comes down to is believing the words that you read are from God because they are I don't understand why people would even read the Bible if they didn't believe it came from God I, I, it's, it's something I cannot comprehend you read the Bible but you don't believe that these words come directly from God that's it's, it's weird to me I don't understand it yet I, I think there's a whole bunch of people like that most people are Psalm 19, the law, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Simple is a nice way of saying stupid people like me. Right? The simple. Big dummies like me. God knows, you know I'm not wise, but the Word of God is wise. Okay? The beast of Revelation 19 is the fourth beast of Daniel. Daniel's a great book. I don't know why people don't read it. Let's do it this way. All right, in the context here, Daniel chapter 7, verse 17, These great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Okay, and then after the fourth beast is the fifth kingdom, which is what we read in Revelation 21, the new heaven and the new earth. It's the kingdom that we put our hope into where there is no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. For all those things will be done away with. That's the fifth kingdom. Alright, so once that fourth kingdom is done away with, 
There's just everlasting life. There's new heavens and a new earth. Daniel names the first three beasts. The Babylonians, the Medes and Persians, and the Greek Empire. And then the fourth empire uh, is not mentioned by Daniel. But we can figure it out by reading Luke, Luke chapter 2 when we learn that Caesar Augustus had the power and authority to d make a decree that all the world should be taxed. Oops. My bad. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all, all the world all the world should be taxed. See, I believe when it says all the world, it means all the world. Alright. Now, if you don't believe the word of God, you might say, oh, that, all the world just meant a couple cities over in the Middle East. But no, no. I See, that, that's the trouble with not believing what you're reading. So um, there's no, without question, without question, the fourth beast of Daniel 7 verse 17 is the Roman Empire. No question about it. No question about it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's nonsense to believe and teach anything else. And it's a hindrance not to understand it. All right, so, for example, in Revelation 17, when we read about the beast that was and is not, and yet is, this is the still, it's still the Roman Empire. The beast that was and is not and yet is, it's the Roman Empire transitioning into the Roman Catholic Church. And hence, therefore, Revelation 17 is why we get this fourth beast mentioned as the great whore. The great whore. Not horror. The great whore. Because right, she is a woman pretending to be the church of God. And yet she is not. She is not the wife rather she is the whore pretending to be the wife the terminology here is perfect the word of God is perfect all people have to do is believe it it's it doesn't make any sense why people wouldn't believe it and upon her forehead was name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery. Babylon the Great. This goes back to Daniel chapter 7 verse 17 when Daniel mentions the four kings that shall rise out of the earth. The four beasts. The first beast, Babylon. So these are all, all four beasts are in the spirit of the first beast, which is Babylon. And this is why the Roman Catholic Church is referred to as Babylon the Great. See how simple it is to put the pieces together? All that's required is to believe. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to know 20 different languages. All you have to do is know a little bit of one that's the one you're born into that's it that's all you have to and then believe the word of God believe God now I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her which has the seven heads and ten horns now this is clear as day terminology clear as day Roman Catholic Church the Roman Empire and uh, Daniel 
goes into great detail as well about this fourth kingdom. All right. So, anyways, uh, what was I talking about here? How um, this guy here uh, just utter nonsense. He just utter nonsense and lacks total understanding. It's incredible that a guy in a suit and tie can deceive so many people. It's incredible. I mean, I wonder what people think. Are they thinking because this guy is in a suit and tie, he must be telling the truth? Is that what it is? You know, it's, it's interesting to me because I, I didn't grow up around suit and tie guys. I never grew up with that mentality of looking up to the suit and tie guy. Right, typically, whenever I've come across a suit and tie guy, they wear too much cologne, number one. All right. They remind me too much of car salesmen, number two. Car salesmen, politicians, all corrupt people. And they're all greedy. Greedy SOBs. Greedy SOBs. That's what I think when I see suit and tie guy. All right. And then, so, corrupt, rich, greedy people... What you think they know more than you do? You think they're smarter than you because they're greedy? Why would you put yourself under them? I don't understand that. I don't understand the mentality of looking up to rich, corrupt, greedy guys. Don't understand it. You think you think this guy here in a suit and tie he's got access to more information than you do? Well, you don't have a Bible. If you have a Bible, you have all the access you could ever possibly ask for. The only thing people lack is understanding, and they lack understanding because they don't believe what they read. And therefore, they turn to the suit and tie guy to, to, so that they can tell them what to think. And that's brainwashing, isn't it? Brainwash me. Brainwash me. I want to know. Tell me what to think. I mean, that, heck, you go 13 years in the public school system being trained to be brainwashed, don't you? Repeat after me. Right? Repeat after me. They don't. Critical thinking. This is how you critically think. Repeat after me. 13 years of public school where these kids don't learn nothing. They learn not to think. They learn to look up to rich people. They're not taught the Word of God. I was never taught the Ten Commandments when I was I was in public school system for 15 years. All right, they had not never at any time was I taught the Ten Commandments. It's incredible. Why? What? I don't know how anybody reads the Ten Commandments and has a problem with anything. It's incredible. Thou shalt not kill. Well, you got a problem with that? Thou shalt not commit adultery? Oh, wait a second. You got a problem with that? Huh? Well, does that depend on who is asking you the question? Your wife, you're going to say, no. But your drinking buddy, you might say, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you're right. Let's, get, let's not talk about that. Uh, is that what it is? I mean, honestly. What's wrong with the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not steal? What do you want, partner? You want something I got? Take it. But how, how could you have a problem with that? It's interesting to me. Okay, so I want to talk about this guy right here. I'm not going to go make a big deal out of 80 sometimes. I, Elder, first of all, that's the thing that sticks out. Elder, 
This guy's younger than me. Why would I call him Elder? Elder Anthony G. Smith. Well, that sounds official. There's a drinking buddies call him Tony. Alright, Tony Smith. That sounds fake. Elder Anthony G. Smith. Well, that sounds like something, doesn't it? Sounds like somebody that knows something. He only got the suit and tie, but he got a pretty nice shirt on. That's right, some pretty nice slacks on. Here, maybe we back it up a little bit. Get a clear look at this gentleman right here. If he'd ever, there we go. So, nice looking gentleman. He's got the button up shirt. Right? Nice gentleman. I'm don't doubt that at all this stuff in the background that's utter nonsense he might as well be wearing a clown suit okay with the hat on top when you get when you're standing in front of something like this this tells me you don't know nothing about nothing you just took some pictures and you're trying to relate something you found on the internet and then you stand in front of a congregation of people and you say, Amen. Amen. And then you Amen every Amen thing that Amen you say, Amen. So anytime, Amen, you say something, Amen, that you want to follow it up, Amen. Follow it up, Amen, with something that sounds very cool and religious and upright, and that's Amen, Amen. Amen. So when you amen, you amen. All right, make sure you get amen. Make sure, amen, you get a bunch of amens. Amen. In. Amen. When, amen, you, amen, speak, amen, make, amen, sure, amen, that amen, you, amen, say amen. 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 Boy, that sounds... That sounds holy and righteous, doesn't it? Amen? I'm not going to make a big deal out of that. If that's what he wants to do, that's fine. I don't want to burden you with all that. Alright, nonsense. But when you amen, and you amen, and then you amen, 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 then you amen, 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 amen. I'm not going to go through... That I'm not even going to talk about it. All right? I'm not going to say a word about it. That's cool. I understand. I want to start here at fourth at uh, the four minute and thirty second mark. I'm not even sure what he's going to say at this point. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm just rambling. We talked about also after persecution, what will happen? What will take place? Rapture. Be the rapture of the church or the saints. You see. And so a lot of people, they don't believe in a rapture, but uh, according to the scripture, there is, is a rapture. There will be a rapture. Yeah, according to, I don't know, I don't know, the world is that stupid to believe that there is no rapture. Well, I've, actually, I've seen people make that claim way too often. All right. Matthew 24 verse 31 and he shall send his angels the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other this is our Lord Jesus Christ speaking in regards to the end of the world in regards to the end of the world if you don't know that you gotta be dumber than dog do and then you're gonna turn around and say oh there is no rapture <laughs> well then anybody I mean you make a blank, blanket statement like that you might as well be dressed up in a clown suit wearing one of those clown hats. So obviously, you don't know what you're talking about. If you got a problem with a, a Nicolas Cage movie, then you're, that's your problem. That's the you got a problem with that movie. That's not the word of God. What's the matter with you? The movies are not the word of God. The Bible, on the other hand, very clearly says that there's going to be a rapture. This is very clearly what I'm putting my hope into. Well, there is no rapture. What are you talking about, man? Do you have any clue what you're talking about at all? 
First Thessalonians 4, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That's the rapture. Oh, there ain't no rapture. It's not in the Bible. What the H-E double hockey sticks is, am I reading here? If that's not the rapture. I don't read the Bible. I just watch movies and the, the movie's wrong. Oh, the movie's wrong. So you got a problem with the movie. Well, the movie's not the Word of God, right? 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Right? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the dead shall be raised. And we shall be changed. Consistent all throughout the Bible. Okay, so anyways. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. I don't know. I, at least he's got this part right. You know, there is a rapture. You got to be a special kind of dog do to even make the statement, though there is no rapture. We can see it as far as even the events taking place throughout Scripture that there is a catching away, even though the terminology of the word rapture is not in the Scripture, but the actual event, we can record it in the Scripture. So this is the catching away of what? The saints to be all caught up or the catching away. After the rapture, what will happen? Anybody remember? The white, I, I, that, look, I'm being too critical here. Why not just point to the Scripture and make it crystal clear that there is a rapture in the written Word of God. See, this is my problem with a lot of these so-called preachers. They don't preach the Word of God. They preach philosophy. And they, they preach um, idealism, right? Why not go directly to the foundation which is the Word of God. Why not go to the source and say, Here, look, this is the rapture. Case closed. The Great Tribulation. All right, I do oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what the wait a second. Even though the terminology of the word rapture is not in the Scripture, but the actual event, we can record it in, in the Scripture. So this is the catching away of what? The saint to be all caught up or the catching away. After the rapture, what will happen? Anybody remember? After the rapture. Anybody remember? What what happened after you got raptured? Really? Are you kidding me? What happened after you got raptured? Alright, if you say so. You what? Did that happen too? You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. The Great Tribulation. How long would the Great Tribulation All right, so are you catching this? The catching away of what? The saints to be all caught up or the catching away. After the rapture, what will happen? Anybody remember? The Great Tribulation. After the rapture. See, maybe this is why he didn't use the Bible. Number one, he doesn't believe it, okay? And then number two, if he did use it, he would have been found out, all right? Let's f let's find out this guy. We got This is a gotcha moment, right? We got you now, sucker. You're a deceiver, all right? You wear the nice shirt and the nice slacks. You got this, I don't know what you got back here, this comic book, cartoon, wallpaper, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. All right, but we got you, sucker. All right, you're exposed now, dummy. You're a deceiver and a liar. You've been found out. 
He says, after the rapture. Okay, this is the rapture. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end to the other. That's the rapture. That's the end of the world. At the end of the world is the rapture. All right. Immediately, and this happens immediately after the tribulation. All right, so immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then the rapture. The tribulation and then the rapture. All right, if you want to, if you're, you're going to be fixated on great tribulation, for then shall there be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world. No nor ever shall be, and except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right, so immediately after the tribulation, all right, and remember, these days are shortened. The, the days of the great tribulation, they are shortened for the elect's sake. Those days are shortened for the elect's sake, and what happens when the, these days are shortened? There appears the sign of son, the Son of Man in heaven, Right when all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Remember what we read in Revelation 1, right? You read it, right? You've read that? In Revelation 1, it says, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so a man so obviously obviously the rapture happens immediately after the tribulation now the the liar deceiver false prophet will tell you the exact opposite won't he it's the catching away of what the saints to be all caught up or the catching away. After the rapture, what will happen? Anybody remember? The great tribulation. The great tribulation. You say it with a little smile. No, you'll get them, won't you? You'll trick them. Right? Because you don't know yourself. You never read the Bible, so how would you know? I mean, how could you know? You don't believe it anyways, right? Even if you did read it, you don't believe it. Therefore, you're not going to have any understanding whatsoever. Immediately after the tribulation and rapture. According to Bozo the Clown, the rapture and then the tribulation. Anybody seeing this? Anybody awake? Hello? Anybody out there? Hello, McFly. Wake up, buddy. Wake up. This is this is insanity man and people are wondering what why do you keep teaching this why why do you keep teaching revelation 20 and the end times and all this stuff because this is why this is why they all got it wrong all right and if they all got it wrong then i i feel it absolutely uh, imperative that I teach it. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Why? Is it? Seriously. Seriously. Is it that God has put this on me to be the lone voice and to teach the simplicity of the events that are about to happen? Because it's going to happen. I guarantee it. Jesus is going to come in the clouds of heaven and there's going to be the great separation. That's the judgment of God. Are you saved or are you not saved? God is going to make that judgment and make that separation. It's the great day of the Lord. It's the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's the end of the world. And this is when we are lifted up out of this world. 
and our enemy is gathered at our feet. This is all throughout the Bible. This goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15, when the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. When Jesus comes back, we're lifted up, and God stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. This is the separation of the wheat and the tares. In 2 Peter chapter 3, it says, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, when the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is the end of the world, the great day of the Lord. This is when the judgment of God comes and we are separated. We are, it's hard, the harvest. It's the harvest, right? It's the harvest when those that are saved are separated from those that are not saved. All throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, this is taught. And it's, it's not just a couple places here and there. It is all throughout the Bible. I mean all throughout the Bible. Echoed over and over and over giving you 360 different angles to see the same thing. You've got no excuse, man. You've got no excuse for seeing not for not seeing this. Psalm 10, for the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. This is talking about the end of the world. When we are lifted up, when the Lord comes down and we are lifted up, and then our enemy is at our feet, our enemies are at our feet. Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Revelation chapter 3. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. This is at the end of the world. We're lifted up. Our enemy is gathered at our feet. And fire comes down from heaven, from God out of heaven, and devours them all. I will make them to come before thy feet. They're going to be below us. We're going to be above them. This is going to happen. And this is all throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. So why, why aren't these guys teaching this stuff? Uh, they're not even close, man. What are you teaching? The Great Tribulation after the Rapture? What are you talking about, man? You just left the Bible and you went off in the comic book world. Alright? It's nonsense. So, what is it, man? Am I the only one? I can't help but wonder. And so I feel compelled. Maybe I am the only one. Because I don't see anybody else teaching this. And this is all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. I mean, it, it it's beyond excusable. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. For he must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet. We're lifted up. Our enemy is at our feet. Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is all throughout the Bible. At the end of the world we are lifted up. Our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed forever. The judgment of God. The great day of the Lord. Over and over and over and over and over. When Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of this world. When it's the end of this world, there is no more pain, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more death. That's it. It's all behind us. This is what we put our hope into, is a world without death, without sorrow, without crying, without pain. A world wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's the, what, uh, what, that is what we put our hope into. 
that is there's if we're not putting our hope into getting raptured and then there's gonna be great tribulation what in tarnations are you talking about we're gonna get raptured and things are just gonna get worse huh that's every bit as idiotic as these guys teaching we're going to get raptured and then the thousand years later God's going to send fire and destroy us all. Uh, it's beyond stupid. It's just one stupid thing after another. All right. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Right? That's what we're, we're putting our hope into this new world. This perfect world. Right? Where we're not dependent on another man to feed us, neither is another man dependent on us to feed them. Right? The works of our hands will be our own. It'll belong to us. We won't work for another, right? Uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it's what we're putting our, it's why we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We want out of this wicked world and, and delivered into the promised land. Right? We're not believing in Jesus Christ just to avoid punishment. It's not about punishment. It's about everlasting life in a life. And it's about life in a world where there is no sin. I don't know what I just I wonder about people I, I do I don't understand it I just don't understand it the boneheads I, I don't think they believe anything that they read in the Bible I think they get everything from another man this man got it from that woman and that woman got it from that man and that man got it from these monkeys and so on and so forth and nobody believes the Word of God anymore and I can't help but think of uh, you know, except those days be shortened, those days, uh, except those days be shortened. There shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And then in Luke 17, I'm going to close it on this. Luke 17. I tell you that the Lord. Oh, wait a second. Am I in the wrong place here? Was it 19? 17, 19? Somewhere in the Bible. I bet you it's 19. Hey, I don't know nothing. i got to get. I got to read the Bible myself, right? I don't think I'm even close yet. I think I'm way off. I think I'm way... I think it's somewhere in the Bible. I need to read the Bible. Here I am getting on these folks not reading the Bible I don't read the Bible myself that's terrible Luke 18 ah, there we go and from 17 to 19 18 there we go somewhere in the Bible it says I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the Son of Man cometh shall he find faith on the earth that's a heck of a question isn't it you consider consider this in the light of Matthew 24. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. There's not going to be very many people saved when Jesus comes back, right? And if God allowed things to continue as they are, there would come a point where nobody would be saved. Hence, Luke 18. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? on the earth so when we get to the very end right before the very end of this world there's gonna be this world is gonna be full of deception and there's gonna be very few people that know the truth that can see the simple clear understanding of the written 
word of God. Consider this, even unto this day when Moses has read the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. In other words, these guys, they're reading the book. They just don't understand it. They can't understand it because they don't believe. Nevertheless, when they will believe, the veil shall be taken away. So this would explain why there's all these people that do not understand the simple written word of God. They don't believe it. Because they don't believe it, the veil is upon their heart. Isn't that what we're seeing today? These guys, they don't believe the written word of God. They're putting, all their teaching comes from another man that came from another man before them that came from a woman, that came from a man, that came from a monkey. I mean, they're all a bunch of monkeys. And none of them believe the Word of God. Alright, so I'm going to, I'm going to, this is why I'm doing this. I'm going to implore you. I'm going to ask you, hey, just consider, what if the King James Bible is the perfect, pure Word of God in the English language and all other versions are perversions that were published and sent forth for the sole purpose of getting you to doubt the Word of God. There's no way you can read an ESV or an NIV and believe that is the perfect pure Word of God. There's no way. And then, of course, the fool will say, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Wait a second. Go back. Consider what I said. What if the King James Bible is the perfect, pure Word of God? What if? You want to look at the other way. Why not look at it the straight way? The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. But consider it. Just consider it. Consider the heaven and earth password. The heaven and earth password. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away.